and welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. This one's a bit of a special one again because I've teamed up with Silverstone Auctions to do a preview of their next sale, which is at the NEC Motor Show. A great event if you've ever been over several halls up at, um, at the NEC and they've got a sale there on the 10th or 11th of November great big catalogue and I'm first venue we're going to go to two venues today the first venue is here at Henry's car barn and we just wheeled some of the cars out and the first one I've got to show you is this enormous Rolls-Royce Corniche convertible um, coach built car from 1984 but the history behind this one is very special because this was gifted to Frank Sinatra on his 70th birthday by people none other than um, Sammy Davis Jr. and Dean Martin, the Rat Pack. And they gifted it to him for 70th birthday and what a fabulous car this is. It has unique features on it, but I just, I really quite like these Rolls Royces because they're from a different era. I love them with the roof up as well. This padded roof, they sort of epitome of luxury um, rather than performance. And you just drift around this car. As you know, I've taken a Rolls Royce to the uh, Arctic. This one is in much better condition than the, than the one I had. In fact, the previous owner has spent 47,000 pounds getting it ready for sale. And it has beautifully coach built features features in it and it even when you open the doors there's a drink dispenser in each door with a little shot and a hip glass you don't get that on modern Rolls Royces but yeah spectacular car it's going to fetch the money they're around a hundred thousand pounds or thereabouts I expect uh, this car will fetch and sale but with that sort of history um, it'll always be a highly collectible car and just 66,000 miles from new right let's go have a look at some others Okay, the second car I want to show you is this Ford Capri 3000S. This is a car that came before the 2.8 injection, and I like the purity of these cars. This slightly earlier car, it comes with a carburetor 3 litre engine, 138 horsepower, performance was 8.5 seconds to 60, and about 125 miles an hour. And there's a simplicity to this, and it's just a great looking car. And then they haven't really taken off in value yet. This one has had a £10,000 restoration over it. We just moved it around. It sounds glorious. It's got a Jan Speed exhaust. It's got a ratty cam as well. So it's got a little bit extra pep than perhaps it had as standard. But it just looks the part. And in this era, they had the Recaro seats with a famous fishnet um, headrest on it as well. Simple car, RS alloys, just a fast Capri and guided at 20 to 25,000, which I think it looks good value to me, particularly in this signal orange color. Here's one of my favourite cars from Bentley. This is the Bentley Brooklands Coupe. This was a real statement of the then chairman of Bentley, Dr. Pefkin, as the final sign-off of the ultimate hand-built Bentley. Basically, it's a coupe version of the Azure, but there's a heft to it, and it was a limited-run car. Only 550 of these cars were produced, with 50 coming to the UK. Such a statement, Bentley. And the, you just open the door, and you think it's made of cast iron, and everything's sort of real metal, all this and it's knurled and you have two door handles on these so if you're sitting in the back you get your separate door handle you can open the door without the front passenger being in it they were amazingly expensive cars they were 275,000 pounds new this car in 2008 it's guided at 90 to 110,000 it's done 23,000 miles or thereabouts it just has that feel that even if there's a sort of nuclear strike on the UK this car will still survive it it just has incredible presence and just the build quality is something else so I think they're a bit of a buy these they're never going to go out of fashion and when you go down the road in it it just feels impervious the Bentley Brooklyn's coupe great thing Right, the next car we've got here is this McLaren 675LT. LT stands for long tail, a sort of hark back to the original F1, the ultimate version of the F1. And this is the first car from the JK collection. We've got a number of cars you're going to see uh, in this video from JK, and this is the first one. Finished in chicane grey, and then with the orange accents, which is a famous colour from McLaren, so with the brakes and in the interior. It also has some extras from their special operations division, including the, the roof scoop, a £30,000 option I was a bit shocked to see and also the vented front wings £11,000 for user if you want those so around 50000 in in all of special options on this car 
The standard car was 2.9 to 60, over 200 miles an hour. This is the ultimate track day weapon in 2016. Um, 2.9 to 60, over 200 miles an hour. Really focused McLaren. It's guided at 230 to 280,000. Only 500 made and they really have a follow in this car and I can quite see why standing beside this example. Okay, we moved away from Henry's Barn and we're now at EM Rogers, who are the transport partner of Silverstone Auctions, because they've just collected the rest of JK's collection. And what a collection it is. I'm very lucky to know JK and he always has an eclectic taste in cars, as you can see here. Okay, we're going to kick off with JK's Mustang here. There's a bullet replica, as you can see, in Highland Green, as they all are, and the blacked out grille absolutely looks the part. You ought to hear this car as well. And JK's tweaked it even further because he's just had the engine modified. It's a 390 cubic inch, which translates to 6.4 litre V8. Obviously, it's four speed manual as well. They just look the part of these cars. It's got the right wheels on it, and he's also uh, put the upgraded brakes on it. This car had a full metal uh, respray in the US in 2008. I just think they look great, these. And they're just what you want an American muscle car to be. And in these colors, it's just iconic. Guided at 58 to 68,000. You're not going to complain. All you have to do is go in the garage and just start it up every now and then, and you'll just love it to bits. Now the next car is this 850 CSI, this BMW, the flagship of its day, 1996 this car left the showroom. It was the ultimate and what I love about this one is the original owner ordered the manual gearbox. That makes it super rare and why it's also here is because it's such low mileage. This is 12,700 miles from new and JK was the second owner of it. It's a beautiful spec this car. This particular uh, version when they came out in 96 this had the uprated, uprated engine says 380 horsepower they're a big relaxed GT car with all the technology that BMW could have in it and of course it still works with only 12,000 miles on the clock they fetch quite a lot of money these now these um, this one is guided just on 80 to 100,000 miles but I've seen one of these sell for over 100,000 in this sort of spec and it was slightly higher mileage than this the only thing that um, is slightly different from standard is the Alpine Alpine wheels, but they were an option when you ordered from the dealership. But you're just never going to find one as good as this. Okay, well, some of you might be surprised to find a Volvo Estate, particularly in a green colour like this, in JK's collection, but I'm not, because in the mid 90s, this was a legendary car, because Volvo went racing in the British Touring Car Championships, with Tom Walkinshaw preparing them, Rick Rydell um, racing them, and it did very well indeed. And to celebrate that, Volvo to produce this car, 850R, with a five-cylinder turbocharged engine, 250 horsepower this put out, uh, front-wheel drive, and it did six and a half seconds to 60 and 158 mile an hour top speed. Just the most bonkers way of transporting Labradors at very high speed. Love it in this colour with the smoke uh, grey wheels, a real find, and um, I didn't check how much the, uh, it was actually guided at. It's guided at 15 to 18,000 pounds to buy a very legendary legendary Volvo. Now there's another touring car next door that's very special as well. All E30 M3s are now collectible and this is particularly so this example here because this is a Johnny Cicotto version which was built to celebrate the 88 um, European win for BMW of this car and it got some upgrades as well not only uh, presents in this colour as well but it had um, an extra spoiler at the front that jutting front spoiler the wheels went up an uh, inch in diameter 16 inch wheels on this with the black centres and the engine got an upgrade as well uh, still 2.3 litre but it went to 215 horsepower. I actually had one of these in period in about 92. I wanted this one, I couldn't find one, so I bought a, a regular edition, but it still had the upgrades of this. It was a wonderful car to own, um, but this, I've not seen a as tidy a one as this for some time. This is only 18,000 miles from new, this particular example. And you can just see everybody's going to want this car. It's guided at 75, 80,000 pounds, but I can see this one, I, I think it's worth it. In this sort of condition, you're not going to find a low mileage one like this again. 
Well, this just shows the range of JK's collection. Now we have a 1989 Mercedes 300 SL. Now this series is known as the R107, so bear with me here, but that was the longest lived of the Mercedes SL range. This first came out in 1971, and this is the very last of the line in 1989. You could either choose a 300 SL like this or a 500 SL. That was the V8 version, but this had a, the 300 had a straight six in it, and it's known as a bit more nimble, has a nice sort of crisp arc to it and this is a very tidy one um, as you see in this um, standard this thistle green color the other thing about this uh, vintage of mercedes you've got a hard top as well as a soft top so a winter motoring you pop this on and you're all snug inside and then comes summer there's two header handles you unlock it put it on the special rack in your garage and there you go i really like the 300 if i was choosing between a 500 and a 300 i would actually go for the 300 sl it just has a slightly more nimble um, feel to it beautiful condition this one and they're sort of coming back into fashion these Mercedes SLs because they're solid and dependable and everybody just loves the Mercedes SL this is guided at 30 to 35,000 I think your money's pretty safe in one of these they're never say ever going to go out of fashion And the final car in JK's collection is this, bringing us bang up to date, the 2015 991 Targa 4S. I'm never quite sure about the Porsche convertible, but I do like these. I just love the theatre of the roof folding on the Targa top and that reminder of that 70s Targa 911 with a stainless steel hoop over it. He's done 11,500 miles in this. I think it's very sensibly guided at 75 to 80,000 pounds. Okay, there was one more car I just had to squeeze in, and it's this Willis Jeep from 1945, because this car was originally owned by someone no other than Steve McQueen. And this is even his license plate when he used to drive it around in California. That's what those plates are still on there. And this was sold from his estate in 1984 to a US collector. And it's the first time it's been offered for sale in the UK. It's just gone through all its Nova checks, etc. It's been sort of mildly restored to get it into this condition here. Here. and what a piece of American history to own and what a famous owner on the dash there's a certificate authenticity it's all in the paperwork they're such basic cars these but I just love them for the purity of this of this Jeep four-wheel drive etc you can register this on the UK you can drive this car if you want it's guided at 80 to 100 thousand pounds but what a bit of memory of Steve McQueen a Willis Jeep like that Okay, well that's, that's the little roundup of this sale. Uh, NEC Motor Show sale is 10th to the 11th of November. If you want to see all the lots, there's a lot more cars on offer. There's 125 cars in all on offer. Check out the website, the Silverstone Auctions website. They're all on there. And if you want to bid on them, remember you have to register and you can bid live if you want on the, via the website or you can leave a telephone bid or a proxy bid or whatever. But yeah, it's great auction. It's lovely to be able to show you these cars and see JK's cars as well. So if you have enjoyed this video, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.